So all the juggle items have different uses and should be played on different heroes, so I'm here today to make a tier list and talk about each item within their own tier. I felt like this is a good idea because I don't think it's worthwhile to compare the items within other tiers and much better just to look at them within their own tiers and sort of just discuss the items. So that's what we're here to do today. Let's get into it. And we're going to start with the tier one items. Also, hopefully you guys enjoyed the minor just as much as I did. I've been watching a lot lately. And one thing I want to say is that I'm going to be looking over the grand finals and making two replay analysis to the heroes for the main game league website. So if you're interested in learning about those teams, right, even just kind of watching Nygma because I'm going to be following their perspectives and learning about what they do, why they do it, how they do it, and how you can put it into your own games, go check it out, sign up, and I'll see you there. So the first item we have is the arcane ring. And this for me is easily one of the best jungle items in the entire game. Maybe there's some people who would debate me on this, but I think the stats are absolutely incredible. I mean, eight intelligence in the early game is really, really bonkers. Like just that number, if that was it, it would be fairly decent, but it also gives three armor, which is totally unnecessary. And every single 40 seconds, you get 75 mana. It's just one of those items where no matter what hero you get it in, just in the jungle, it's useful on, and therefore I think this item is an S tier item, uh, and I'm pretty confident in saying that. Broom handle, way too situational to be good, or to be high up on my list technically. It, it's a very awkward item to get. It does work well on basically every single melee hero, but it's particularly good only on heroes like Tiny, Sven, maybe Ursa. So I, I don't know, I, I think it's an alright item, definitely solid, but I'm gonna put it at C because it's not that viable on most heroes. Fitted Broach for me is an, a very underrated item, at least for the early game. You know, a lot of people run out of early game mana, right? Like, you, you run out of mana and it's hard to sustain. So if you're a bottle hero and you get a Fitted Broach and you're kind of going back to base and refilling your bottle and having high max mana, this is an amazing item to have because also you can drop it on the ground and use Mangoes, Clarities, Wand, Stick, Shrine, and you're going to get a lot of effectiveness out of that, which is a big deal. So I think the movement speed and the mana... From this item are a bit underrated so i'm gonna put it at b iron talon though that item's eh, i mean maybe it doesn't deserve to be there but i'm gonna put it at the bottom only because it doesn't feel hard to jungle on most heroes right now like sure it could be great on a hero like pa or you know an under farm dark seer or something like that but eh, maybe i'm underestimating this however ironwood tree though there's no way i underestimate this item basically how i see this item is it's seven all stats for 150 gold and an ultimate orb which is 10 all stats Right, just three more all stats, that's quick math, is what, a thousand more gold? Sorry, no, not a thousand, two thousand more gold for three more stats. That's how efficient this item is, uh, which is absolutely ridiculous. And Ocean Heart, I almost want to put it in S tier as well, because if you get this as a mid laner, you can literally just push out mid and like consistently sustain yourself by just chilling in the mid lane every so often, like when you're pushing out the mid wave. It's really strong for that reason, so I'm also a big fan of this item. It's just good on every single hero you get it on, so I think it's extremely flexible and good at every stage of the game. Same thing for Keen Optic. I'm a big fan of tier one items in general. Like small items are my favorite items in Dota. Uh, it has, hopefully you guys know that, like by now. <laughs> I, I feel like I stress buying small items a lot, but uh, Keen Optic is so good, right? It's just like, for me, anything that gives mana regen is going to be good in the early game. Anything that gives mana is a good item. That's how I see it at least. If it gives mana, it's good. Kind of want to put it in A though, just so my list looks kind of nice. But maybe, no, this is this is what it needs to be. This is good. I like this. Royal Jelly, though, that, that thing's S, for sure. Just having, once again, mana region on two early game heroes is just going to enable you to, you know, be a lot more efficient on two heroes. That's not very fair, in my opinion. It's like, why are two heroes just more tanky and more sustainable than everyone else? It's like, yeah, I don't know. Mango Tree? That's an, uh, this item's weird because it's like, if you use it correctly, it can be an, an S tier item. But most of the time, I think it's like a B tier. So I'm going to leave it at B. The extra mangoes are actually really nice though. I think if this item was used more properly or I don't know, it's so it's actually so good to jungle it sometimes. If you get it on a storm and you just get three mangoes right away, it's so much mana. I'm going to put it there. Shovel, that thing's S tier. And PMS, I'm going to say is, I'm going to say it's B. It's actually more useful than I think people give it credit for. But Shovel, just to briefly talk about this guys, 150 HP is actually like, I think this item would be good without the 150 HP. I'm not going to lie. Like, being able to get salves and TPs is basically a GPM talent. That's how I see it, at least. Like, even just getting... Like, you can't get a bounty rune. I've had friends get 3-4 bounty runes in a game, which is a lot of gold, right? That's like 700, 800 net worth that you're just generating from this random jungle item. And 150 health is going to turn a fight in the early game, right? It definitely, definitely can. So, yeah, I just... I definitely think this item is extremely strong and should not be overlooked. All right, now we're back with the Tier 2 items. Hopefully, you guys are enjoying this. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, like tier lists and just ranking things like Dota items or heroes or anything of that sort, 
like the video to let me know, and also comment down below and tell me what you want to see. I do read the comments quite often, and hopefully I'll see you there. Regardless, getting into the tier 2 items now, what do we have? First item, Clumsy Net. Guys, Clumsy Net is actually S tier, and I'm not saying that as a meme, I genuinely believe this item is S tier. Reason being, it gives 6 all stats, and 2 mana regen. That is so much. It's so much. It's so many stats in good numbers. Like for support, that is the god item. It's not only another disable for multiple heroes that can't cancel TPs, it just solves that problem entirely. It's not even that. You don't even need it to cancel like TPs. It's just great control, right? It's a two second duration, if I'm not mistaken, which is a long time. And the stats are fantastic. I personally think this item is actually broken. I'm not kidding. People might disagree with me, but I, I'm pretty convinced this clumsy net. The cast range is also massive, by the way. <laughs> it's also massive. Moving on to the dragon scale. Um, it does give a lot of armor, right? 5 armor and 5 HP regen, as well as the burn on attacks, is pretty solid. But it just feels like one of those items that gets disregarded first. So therefore, it's C in my opinion. If you need armor, pick it up. But for the most part, meh. Essence Ring in my opinion, is an A tier item, gives, what, 6 intelligence, but 2.5 mana regen, which is a ton. And how I see these items, these mana items, is by the 15 minute mark, if you jungle an essence ring and an arcane ring, you'll just have infinite mana, and you'll have so much mana to, to jungle, so much mana to push in waves, you can constantly fight, you're gonna be able to be so active compared to everyone else. Like, you don't have to buy clarities, it's absolutely insane the value you get out of these mana items in the early game, and it only costs 200 mana to give you 425 max HP or heal, like, well, and heal, I guess. But, so, therefore, I think this item is so good. It's really, really one of the better ones. It looks kind of mad, but, like, even in the early game, you know, 15 minutes in, getting 400 HP is massive. It's so massive. Growth Bow, I'm going to put this at B. I think it could be an A tier item, especially on specific heroes like TA. I think it's quite good on Storm. I think it's pretty solid on Drow, Viper. Definitely Viper, actually. Viper's one of the best ones. But, you know, other than those heroes, it's a bit meh, right? It, it, like, there's not a lot of ranged right-clickers in Dota. Definitely not compared to League of Legends. Because I play League every single day, if you guys didn't know. It's actually, uh, I'm in the LCS. I think that's what it's called. But, uh, yeah, check me out there. Imclaw, I don't know. I think Imclaw's, it's a weird item to me because the 130% crit is, like, it seems sometimes underwhelming. But at the same time, it's like, I have recently played a TA game and I had the Imclaw. And even when I didn't have Refraction up, I could basically two-shot the wave which was pretty convenient. So I'm relatively convinced this item is very strong only because of the fact that it gives 24 damage, which is a very high number. 24 damage is a lot of damage. That's kind of all I have to say. Not much more than that. Nether Shoal, 20% magic resist makes this item, in my opinion, A tier. It is awkward because the minus three armor can drop a lot of the spell casters that might want this because it gives 8% spell lamp as well. They might drop them into the negative armor potentially. Well, maybe not negative, but very low. So that's a bit of a concern for me. However, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna say this is a B tier item because situationally, if you get it on a hero like Centaur or someone that already has armor and just wants magic resist, it's absolutely insane. Philosopher's Stone, and I know you guys are going to hate me for this. I know I'm going to get hate for this. <laughs> but I don't think this item is actually that good. It gives 200 mana, it gives 60 GPM, so I understand why you might think it's good. It's like, oh, it's GPM. Eh, yeah, that's so good. But I, how I see it is it's only, like, 60 GPM means in 10 minutes, right? In 10 minutes, you get 600 gold. Is that really that good? Like, really? Like, sure, it could get you a couple extra century words and maybe allow you to get to your Glimmer Cape, but... I don't know. I, I personally don't think this item is that good. C tier. You can hate me in the comments. All right, hate me in the comments. That's fine. I'll argue with you any day. Vampire Fangs. This item and certain heroes, it's like A tier because it's 50% lifesteal and it seems like so much. But I'm going to have to say, I'm going to have to say it's it's B because it's like the grow bow in my opinion where situationally it's very strong. People's Gift. I love People's Gift. I'm going to say it's an A tier. Same thing with Vambrace. These are just such good stat items. 15 minutes in, you get these stat items with your two Wraith Bands or one or whatever. You're going to have like 1,700, 1,800 HP on Agility Heroes. Like even Agility Carries, it's crazy how much value you can get if you get these these stat items in the right game. Same thing with Aquila, but unfortunately, I, I am going to put Aquila in D, only because I think for most heroes, it's not great. I guess the stats is actually okay. Maybe I'm going to do it like this. I think this is actually more proper. Uh, I don't know how to feel, though. Maybe Dragon Scale, I'm, 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 not, I'm not giving it enough love, but this is going to be my list for Tier 2, and now let's move on to Tier 3. So first off, we have Craggy Coat, and eh, this item, when it first came out, 
I always had doubts about it. It's like so much armor, right? 13 is a lot of armor, but for most heroes, the minus 35 attack speed feels kind of weird. It's like, oh, I could put it on a hero like Centaur, but Centaur kind of needs attack speed. I could put it on Doom, but Doom kind of wants attack speed sometimes. You know what I mean? Like you don't want zero attack speed. So I have mixed feelings about this item. I'm going to have to put it in the C tier. Also Enchanted Quiver, pretty sure this item's close to useless. Doom is tier two. I would say it's very good, but ah, it's so weird because it's like, you get this bonus range and 270 magical damage as well as true strike which is like kind of good because it's every eight seconds so like certain heroes can use this really well but most heroes it's basically useless so yeah i'm gonna say this is c actually even d tier greater fairy fire i think this is an a tier item what i recommend you do if you get it in team fights is even if you take just 500 damage just pop a charge i think the biggest mistake people make with this item is that they never really use it or try to use it multiple times in a fight but it can be used like that it can be hard to remember because it's like oh i just got this item and i didn't plan on building it try to really think about that like i'm gonna pop my uh, Fury Fire, because if you pop it twice in a fight, you have effectively 1,000 more HP. Mindbreaker is a funny item, um, because when it first came out, actually, I don't even remember when it first came out, <laughs> but when it was a four second silence, holy, holy, this item was way too good when it was a four second silence, but now it also gives you an extra 25 damage on the uh, attack and 25 attack speed, which is pretty good. Frankly, it's still pretty good. You know, just being able to initiate and silence someone, like follow up with the silence is pretty solid, but I don't think it's nearly as good as it used to be, so I'm going to say it's a beer tier item. Orbit Destruction, same thing. When this item first came out, its numbers were much better. At least the armor reduction, I believe, was 7, but it's still a really good item. You know what I mean? For most right clickers, having an extra 5 armor reduction and basically a Scotty value of slow is super strong, and therefore I'm going to put it in A. Paladin Sword is a weird one for me. Because 17 damage, 17 lifesteal is like, it's pretty good. But the weird thing to me about this item is the passive, which amplifies the wearer regen, healing, and lifesteal by 17%, which allows you to frontline very, very well. Because if you pair this item with the hero like Io or, or a Chen, even a Treant or Dazzle, you get so much healing. Like, let's say you're trying to siege high ground, and in which case it makes it a really good man up item. Uh, so situation, I think this item is very good, but most of the time it's like, meh. So I'm going to put it in B. Quickening Charm. Hmm. Hmm. Huh. Huh. 9 HP regen. The, the HP regen is okay. It's a lot. Uh, but the most important part is definitely the, the cooldown reduction for sure. 13% is about actually a quite high number. So for that reason, I'm going to put it in A. Only because this, this item works on every single hero in Dota. So it, it feels really good to get it. Repair Kit. I actually despise this item. I, I kind of want this item to be removed. Not going to lie. I think it's foolish. You can cast it from super far away. Like, you can literally cast this item from, uh, it feels like across the map. It doesn't have a channel time, if I'm not mistaken. You just, like, click it on the building. I don't know, man. I'm pretty sure it needs to be, like, a 3 second, 4 second, 5 second channel time. Because it just restores 40% of its health over 30 seconds, right? I know it gets charges, but it restores 40% of the health, which is a ton. It gives it 10 armor, which is way too high. And then 4 multi-shot, which makes it absolutely impossible to push unless you are, like, a complete push strat. You could have a position 5 dazzle with 1k net worth alive and he can hold high ground alone with a repair kit why is that in the game it's so dumb as is i don't like multi-shot not gonna lie so i think that's an st item spider legs another st item it allows you to crawl over walls and this in team fights is just ridiculous it keeps you alive in situations where you should just guarantee die having extra 24 percent movement speed is super high and 30 percent turn rate makes you extremely mobile once again it just lets you disengage with this this scurry so maybe I shouldn't put this in S actually, maybe it's an A, but like a tier three has a lot of really good items in my opinion. And it's not that late into the game, you know what I mean? These items come up in every single game basically. Telescope, I want to put the telescope in S, not gonna lie, not gonna lie. The reason being that supports can always carry this item and its passive is crazy. It just lowers scan cooldown, which is actually very important in, in the pro scene. It can be really, really useful to be able to scan out areas, you know what I mean? 50% is a big deal because that's like, what, I think 3 minutes and 30 seconds less? That's a huge deal. But the more important part is this bonus attack range and bonus cast range. If it was attack range for melee heroes, because it is not, as far as I'm concerned, you can't have a Sven who's hitting from across the map if he has a broom handle and a telescope, right? But the fact that this is an aura, right, uh, is pretty insane, right? And, and just even 125 cast range, this is one of those things where it's like, okay, it works on abilities like phantom assassin dagger phantom assassin w it works on a sven stun wraith king stun it's like this is always going to be useful it's like gonna do things for you that you don't even realize and therefore i think telescope is an a tier item wow i feel like i'm putting everything in a i don't know it feels fair to me it feels very fair to me to do that 
And then finally, Titan Silver. Sorry, Titan Sliver. My bad, guys. The base attack damage item with status resist and magic resist. This is just like one of the better right click items for heroes. It feels really good to pair with things like Satanic and Sanjanyasha. And therefore, I think I'm also going to put it in a very, like, all these items feel great. And even though some of them can be situational, such as the Titan Sliver, it's, even this, this, this item, they're just such good right-click items that I feel like they deserve to be here. Maybe this item could be B. I'll leave it at that. All right, next up, we have the Tier 4 items. And frankly, I'm going to have to reread these because this is where it starts to get a bit hazy for me. I know, I recognize some of the items for sure. But like, but an item like Magic Lamp, like what is Magic Lamp? I feel like I never see this item. Is this even in the game? But <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Regardless, let's get straight into it. The first item we have is Flicker. And uh, it gives you 30 movement speed as well as every 5 seconds you can dispel your debuff and blinks you to a random spot within 600 range. Does not get disabled on incoming damage. So this item just make, it's just really whack. It is actually particularly useful on supports. So let's say you're playing Oracle, Slark Psycho is trying to kill you. You just like flicker around. I also saw Henry play uh, a puck game where he had a flicker and it seemingly saved him in a fight like multiple times. And I don't know, it's like there's one of the clips and this item seems good in the right situation, but way too situational to be way like very good. So I'm going to say it's I'm going to say it's C. Maybe I'm wrong for saying that. Maybe the repositioning is actually better than I think. But for now, I think it's going to be in there. Next up, we have the Havoc Hammer, and this item is, it's definitely good. 18 strength is quite a lot, and 30 damage. If you get this on the right hero, such as a Dragonite, it's going to be very good. But once again, that's fairly situational. However, you know, 18 strength, it's its one of those items where it's like, okay, toss it on a support. It's, you know, like, right, we don't want it on a core. We'll throw it on our, you know, we'll throw it on our Dazzle. Dazzle's now 18 more strength, which is, what, 360 more HP. And in addition to that, every 10 seconds, you can knock back enemies 300 range, which is great on a support, right? Just think about it. it. It makes so much sense on a support. If you're getting dove, right, by a Sven or Jug or Slark, as I mentioned, PA, it doesn't matter. You just knock them back every single 10 seconds, slowing them by 50% for three seconds and dealing 175 damage plus one times your strength, which really doesn't matter too much, but... I think this item has a lot of utility on supports that people aren't using right now, so I think it's a B tier item. Illusionary Cape, I'm actually a massive fan of this item. If you're good with illusions and understand how to use them to get in lanes very quickly, bait out spells, actually those are the main two things, baiting out spells and pushing in lanes. If you can do those two things with this Illusion Cape, it gives so much utility, it is great. Even if you're a support player, do not ignore this item. It is so good for baiting, I can't even explain to you because you only have one illusion, so it's very easy to control, and uh, the stats are great. It's really, really good, especially for these, these illusion heroes as well, right? PL, Naga. Even a hero like uh, Jug, it's fantastic, right? The 14 agility, 14 strength, some of the best stats, obviously, for the later stages of the game for these heroes. And uh, creating the, the illusion is great. In addition, it, it has a passive, which increases outgoing damage of all units and illusions controlled by the hero by 10%. So it also works on a hero even like Lycan with his units. But even like a hero like PL, it gives 10% extra damage, which is super, super strong. Also, the illusion is super, super strong because it's only 150 damage taken and 50% damage dealt, which is super strong. Great. I almost forgot to mention that the duration is 30 seconds and the cooldown is 30 seconds, so you have a permanent illusion. So I personally think this item is S tier. I think most people are going to disagree, to be honest. But especially in pubs, if you use it correctly, I think this item is S tier. I know that's a hot take, so I'll leave it in A, but <laughs> hot take, hot take. Next up, we have the lamp thingy. I don't know what it does. It gives 400 health, which is fine. When the wearer's health falls below 50%, they receive a hard dispel and be healed for 300. That's garbage. I don't even know. I'm sure it's like okay, but I'm putting it in trash here. <laughs> Next up, we have the Minotaur Horn, and this item is just solid. This is a solid item. Definitely deserves A, in my opinion. It's just one of those things where it's like, how is this not good? Grant spell immunity for 1.75 seconds, which is great. Like, might not seem like a lot, but that's the ability to, you know, dodge a spell or just initiate for a certain period of time. Maybe get in and get out. Also, 20 strength is very high. Uh, once again, works very well for a lot of these initiators too. So I think that's an A tier item easily. This ninja gear is actually becoming better and better in my opinion. Like, I don't think it was nearly as good in the past. I think it's gotten buffed a couple times, if I'm not mistaken. But 20 agility is a ton. So it works very well on these heroes trying to move around the map. Like a hero like Slark, you can literally smoke mid-fight to start healing early. Like even if you're sort of in vision, if you smoke, you immediately get out. I know that's a bit situational and very specific, but I just want to give an example. But even I saw, um, I believe GH was using it on Disruptor to actually set up within this tournament. And it seemed very potent and it actually allowed him to kill, I think it was Armel? Yeah, I believe it was Armel Storm Spirit. He used the ninja gear to smoke over to him. So situationally very good. 30 movement speed, pretty solid. And therefore, I think this item is a B tier. Princess Knife is a weird one for me. Increases attack speed projectile, which is decent, not great. 
it's okay i think and hitting them with the hex is like it's definitely good 1.5 seconds is actually a long time considering you could put it on a hero like lion and he could chain someone someone for longer so it's also only a 12 second duration so i'm gonna put this i kind of want to put it in c i can see it being in b i don't know i'll put it in b only because hex late game is just so strong next up we have the prison the spell prison and this item is fantastic it is really great probably one of the best items in the game actually um only because it reduces cooldown by 20 percent, which is absolutely massive and it gives 4 mana regen, which is a ton, and 12 all attributes, which is also a ton. So in my opinion, this is an S-tier item because of its ability to be used by so many different heroes. Next up, we have the Leveler. 50 attack speed, bonus building damage. Great for sieging, great on a hero like Sven, great on a hero like Slark, who can struggle with sieging, great for sieging with Jug, great for sieging with Lifestealer. And overall, attack speed is solid, so I'm going to give that to B tier. Next up, we have the Timeless Relic. This uh, increases the debuff duration, so if you're a hero that does a lot of stuns, right? Or if you're here like Skywrath Mage that silences for a long period of time, 25% is huge. Also, it gives you extra spell damage, which is also massive. So only because this is so good on every single spellcaster, right? Any sort of stunner, like you're like Bat Rider, you know, doesn't matter. Dazzle, Poison Touch, it, like literally even every single weird spell you can think of, or even just the basic spells, right? Uh, shackles. It's so good on, so I think this item is definitely very, very good. And finally, the Witless Shaco, I'm personally putting it in A, only because I think you can definitely work out losing the max mana, right, the 400 max mana, to have a 1,000 HP. I mean, a 1,000 is so much. Like, it's so much. That is easily going to change a fight. You just chuck that on, on some support that's getting bursted, it's like, woohoo, now they have a chance to get off all their spells. I'm very certain that this item is very good. And you can put it on a frontliner support. It's very, very versatile. And last and certainly least, and yes, I said that on purpose because frankly, I have an issue with the fact that I have not seen a single tier five item in one of my games. I have not had a single one of my games. Not one. To me, there's just an issue with that. And I, I expressed this to my friend very early on when the patch was announced. I'm like, why are there so many items? What is it? Six, eight, ten... 12, 14 items the most jungle items most jungle items in any tier why are the most jungle items in any tier basically unseen what games go till 70 minutes almost none of them besides the minor recently where we had the stygian desolator or desolator 2 don't know why they changed the name but i don't know i have an issue with it personally i, I would prefer to see these items shifted to minute 60 at least then we'll see them fairly often or just make them all slightly worse or quite a bit worse and move them towards minute 55 in which case we'll definitely see them quite often moving on though i don't want to get stuck on that for too long we're going to go from item to item first off starting with the apex increasing your primary attribute by 80 percent it's a bit hard for me to do the math here i feel like on certain heroes especially certain strength heroes this could be absolutely broken i suppose if you're a very high agility hero this is going to give you unbelievable stats but the thing is in the late game 70 minutes in hopefully if you're an agility hero you're basically six slotted and then you come into the issue like what do you replace because if you replace something that gives you primary attribute and then you take the apex you're getting it's like i don't know it's a whole mishmash so this item to me feels like b but honestly guys this is going to be a lot of speculation so i'd be happy to debate this because frankly i do not know i do not know where these items fall next up on the list we have ballista i think it's called 400 attack range which is insane and it knocks back enemies with every attack that to me seems like situationally broken on a hero like drow sniper od it's like 400 attack range and it knocks them back that's crazy the book of the dead in the late game people are gonna have plenty of ways to clear your creeps however assuming that there's five necro monocon red creeps like no joke i've literally never even seen it happen so <laughs> that's crazy to me i frankly don't know why that's the case but I don't know. I'm going to have to say this is probably one of the worst ones. Uh, maybe not. Maybe situationally it's very good on a Beastmaster. Like, for the most part, I can't imagine it's that good. Next up, we have... I don't even know what this thing is called. Oh, Ex Machina. 25 armor, and it resets the cooldown on all items, except for Refresher Orb. And that's a 30-second cooldown, which is unbelievably low for items. That is insane you could pop bkb hex bloodthorn nullifier and refresh them all that's crazy actually that's an a tier item for sure like situationally on certain initiators who's just trying to lock down people that's crazy though it's like being a tinker on a hero like in frontline next up we have the fallen sky uh, does it even tell me what this item does hold alt all right i'm dota i'm gonna hold alt 20 strength pretty good stats not incredible but i've literally never seen this i'm not i'm not i'm actually not looking it up that's just i'm not doing it this is some uh this has got to be like C tier, right? It puts you in the sky, right? So it takes you out of the game as far as I'm concerned, if that's what that... <laughs>
<laughs> Dude, why don't they make these items like actually you like practical? I I've never seen it happen. It's so dumb. Apparently it takes you out of the map, which can be useful for disengaging. And for that reason, I'm going to say, oh, but like it makes you use your blink dagger as a slot, which is bizarre. Like, do you really want to do that? I don't know. I'm putting it as D. <laughs> Next up, we have the Force Boots, which push you, but it dispels the user every six seconds and pushes you in a direction, which is crazy. Also, it completely removes the speed limit for the wearer, which, uh, that seems pretty nuts. Like, if you get surged on Bloodseeker and such, like, wait, but Bloodseeker already doesn't have a cap, right? So, I don't know, that seems pretty strong, especially if you get, like, a haste or whatever. Wait, no, but the haste locks at a 550. I'm getting so confused, these items are so... But it's 50% movement speed, which is absolutely insane. If you have a bunch of other movement speed items, you are going to zoom. Also, I think the most important part here is you dispel the user and you push them 800 units in the direction they're facing on a 6 second cooldown. And a 6 second force staff is going to absolutely change fights. And therefore, I think this item on supports is fantastic. So I think it's an A tier item strictly for the, or I shouldn't say strictly, but primarily for the, uh, the active the force. The force. Next up, we have Fusion Rune. It's like, this item seems good on specific heroes. Like on a storm, getting a DD regen and arcane seems absolutely insane, but it's a consumable, meaning you only get it seemingly once? Who knows, man. It says it has an 120 second cooldown, but you consume it, so like, oh, it has charges. Okay, so it seems like you probably get three of these or something like that. That's pretty good. I'm gonna say this item, it's probably really good because it's one of those items where you can use it and then swap it out. You know what I mean, guys? Like, I think for strictly that reason, it's like a lot of these items, it can be awkward to pick them up because it's like, oh, what do I drop? All right. I'm, I already have so many items if, if I'm a core by 70 minutes. What do I drop? Fusion Rune doesn't give you that problem. And for that reason, I'm going to put it in A only because it can be used every single game where the other items can feel a bit wonky, in my opinion. Like, it, I would have to imagine at least. Mirror Shield, this was like the best item in Dota when it first came out. At least I had to imagine it was like a 75% chance to... Like, Lotus Orb, reflect it, but also Lincoln's block it, so, like, you don't get hit and you reflect it. It's like, what? <laughs> it also gives 20 all attributes, which is, of course, good. Uh, so, yeah, this is definitely, in my opinion, still an S-tier item. The ability to block things every four seconds, like, woof, and it reflects it. Like, it's not just a Lincoln's, right? It also reflects it. So, yeah, this isn't, this, that's an S, in my opinion. Phoenix Ash, this is probably one of the best items in the game when it first came out, but now it's, because it, it had, like, a ton of stats, and it would, like, giga heal you. I think it heal you to full. But now it's just uh, half health and non-ultimate abilities cooldowns reset, which on some heroes is fantastic. Like on dying, it's two tombstones. You could even put it on, uh, you know, you could put this on a terror blade because it prevents the lethal damage from going off and it heals you to half and it resets something like meta, which, you know, can make a lot of sense. But like, what slot do you take it out on? So eh, I'm going to say this is probably C. It, maybe it's B because it's good on supports. What's the cooldown? Oh, it's just a passive? Well, it must have a cooldown, right? It just doesn't have a cooldown? I don't know. Oh yeah, it used to give 30 all stats and then they straight up just remove that. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm gonna leave it at C. That seems fair. Next up, we have the pirate hat. 250 attack speed. The banner rune is just goofy. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna basically ignore that. I can't imagine that actually matters, right? <laughs> like, yeah, I'm, I'm not missing something. But sure, pirate hat on certain heroes is very good. But I'm gonna say, even though it's 250, which is like bonkers, I can't imagine it's like that practical. You know what I mean? But maybe it is. Maybe it is. <sighs> I don't even know what to say. I'm gonna I'm gonna put it at A. 250 seems like situationally absolutely insane. Next up we have the spell prism. This thing is really crazy for certain heroes. It is a bit situational, so I'm gonna put it at B, only because like it only works for spellcasters. But 450 cast range, and you know the, the vision is pretty good as well, right? But the cast range is pretty crazy. 450 on a hero like Zeus, Sky. Uh, you know, Lion, whatever it is, Bane, like, that's, that's pretty nuts. Like, this is one item that you 100% just throw on a support, and you just let him yeet spells from across the map. The Desolator, I'm definitely gonna put it A. It's, like, just a very good right-click item. It also lets you end the game very effectively. I saw it on Weeha yesterday. He literally was shredding on Windranger. The, the plus 100 damage with his level 30, which made him get his Focus Fire reduction talent, like, the less damage on fo Focus Fire. Or I, I guess I should say more, but less damage reduction. And uh, the, the 12 armor to the towers, he shredded. And it let him end the game. It was a big part in their victory. So for that reason, I think it's super good on basically any right clicker and lets you siege extremely effectively, which definitely allows you to end in the late game and can definitely be the difference between winning or not. So I'm going to I'm gonna say that's an, an, an A. Next up, we have the Trident. Uh, this is like the three items thingy that gives like 33% of everything. I mean, sure, it's definitely good, but... 
no, this is definitely very good. It's definitely very strong. Because 33% status resistance is very, very high. It's like, it gives you a little bit of everything. This is like an item I'd really want on a hero like Storm. You know what I mean? Where it's like the mix between spellcasters. Or a hero like Lina, it seems pretty good on. Like, right click Lina in the late game. But it's a bit situational for that reason. Where I think it's like, you kind of want to have it on a spellcaster slash right clicker. But like, some of the stats are going to be useless for most of the heroes. Kind of? Kind of? Is it an A? I'm going to say it's a B. And then finally, Woodland Striders. I'm going to fill it in and put it in the C. Um, I have seen it block off. Maybe I'm actually underestimating this item because I've literally seen it win uh, a game for a team. It was like one of those Dota what the fuck clips and it was like, <laughs> you can use it on a courier in the late game and surround your ancient with trees, blocking them off. But like the enemy team could have just bought a Quelling Blade or Tangos at any point in time and completely countered it. So like, maybe <laughs> it's a bit cheesy, but to be fair, if you're running away and you create a bunch of trees, you're going to make the enemy lose vision of you, which naturally for support is a big deal. And, you know, therefore, I think this item is very solid. And uh, I think this item is decently solid, but definitely not better than the other items. I wouldn't prefer Woodland Striders. But once again, I don't know. But hopefully you guys enjoyed that tier list. Uh, I'm a bit confused, but if you did, <laughs> please do like and subscribe. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Are you tired of being hard stuck at your rank? Over at GameLeap.com, we have a library of hundreds of guides authored by pro players and coaches covering all literally every aspect of dota whether you're looking to master a new hero or role or just polish up your existing skills game leap is the proven place for competitive gamers to hone their craft and unlock their secret potential hit the link on screen right now right now to take advantage of our special offer for a 25 percent discount guys 25 percent, and start your journey today